So uh, our next talk is from Sia. Uh, Sia is now at Shopify, uh, but I, you know, Sia has been doing amazing writing and blogging for years, honestly, not just performance. I think it was uh, a lot of work outside of that and then increasingly more and more on performance over the years. Um, and now is working at Shopify, helping a lot of merchants and stuff improve the performance. We talked a little bit at the beginning about how like that's one of the things that like platforms now are trying to compete on is that level of performance and making sure that uh, you know that that sticks for folks and you know the the number of case studies that we have on performance and business metrics when it comes to ecom is very very high. So it's extremely important. And Shopify is really interesting because because of the sheer volume and maybe you'll mention the number, but the sheer volume of merchants on that platform. When Shopify does something, it moves the web in in a very meaningful way, which I think is pretty awesome. So everybody, if we give a hand to see ya. Hello, everyone. My name is Sia Caramelagos, like Tim said. I am excited to talk to you today about breakfast. The organizers are probably a little worried right now. <laughs> Katie already talked about early hints. It's fine. Um, so I love breakfast. I even have it for dinner sometimes. This is a picture of American pancakes. And, um, you know, it's one of the things I love. And it's shown here in its like canonical format. And uh, we have butter and syrup. So I went to breakfast with my friend at its cute little cafe. And uh, we ordered pancakes and coffee and everything. And um, we're sitting there waiting there. We have our coffee. The pancakes eventually come, but there's no butter right? So I'm like, oh, can I get some butter? So we're sitting there waiting. I eat the fruit on the side, and eventually the butter comes, right? But now I have cold pancakes and cold butter, and if you've ever tried to put cold butter on cold pancakes, it just doesn't work. So this was a very sad experience, right? Before we go too much further, I'll mention who I am again. I'm Sia. I work at Shopify. I am a web developer. I also work on web performance. You can find out more about me on Sia.codes. And I'm very active on Twitter. I'm the Green Greek. So you can catch me there if you have questions. I uh, like to be creative. This is a costume I made for Mardi Gras. I used to live in New Orleans. And um, before you think that's amazing, just wait till the next slides, and you'll be like, Sia, you lost all credibility on the creative front. Um, <laughs> so yeah. But what I really wanted to talk about here is two things. I love building things, but I'm also a process engineer. So I actually worked in semiconductors originally as a process engineer, and I would argue that I've been a process engineer since birth. I was that weird kid that would like optimize my Lincoln Log builds. <laughs> Things like that, just like a total weirdo. But um, yeah, so I've been a process engineer the entire time, which probably explains why I went into web performance, right? Uh, you're probably wondering to yourself, why did you draw a picture of a jellyfish with bloodshot googly eyes? And that is not what I attempted to draw here. This is the cafe table from the breakfast experience. And those are two coffees. <laughs> Um, so what other entities? We're going to analyze this process, right? What other entities are there? So this, we have the kitchen, right, where the chef cooks the breakfast. This is supposed to be a skillet with eggs in it. And also we have the food storage area, aka the fridge or the pantry. or um, It's also like the American English versus the other Englishes. I hope you know what I'm saying. But we usually have this little serving station, too, where the waiters can, you know, store the coffee. Maybe there's some silverware there. And in the US, at least, we have a computer. That's where they put the orders in. And I know you're going to freak out, but we give them our credit cards, and they go to that table to run them as well. Um, but yeah. So what's happening with the process, right? First, I order my pancakes. So I want to get the pancakes. And <laughs> the waiter puts it in the computer, and it goes to the kitchen. And that's where we, the chef knows to start working on the pancakes. He goes to the fridge, and he gets the milk and eggs and all the other things, probably not just from the fridge, to make the pancakes. And then he makes the pancakes. He, he renders the pancakes. And then... <laughs> And then eventually the pancakes come back to the serving station and to my table. But 
like we said, where is the butter? <laughs> it's still in the fridge, so very sad. This is a sad path. Um, but there is an alternative way to organize this process, right? So I made one, one small change here in case you can't see it. <laughs> there is butter now at the serving station. <laughs> And so now when I order the pancakes, the waiter can be like, oh, hey, do you want some butter with that? Indeed, I would. So now while, you know, the cook is working on the pancakes, the butter's arriving at the table, and then the pancakes arrive, and now I have warm butter, warm pancakes, and I am very happy. So this is the happy path. Yay. <laughs> um, so where's that inefficiency? in this process? Where did it originally come from? Or where is the, uh, what's the word for it? English is hard. I know it's <laughs> only my first language. Um, so we have an inefficiency here, right? That, that um, chef cook time. <laughs> and there's another one that's probably a little less obvious. So I, I redrew this picture. And we have this kitchen distance latency, right? The distance between the kitchen and the serving station might be quite long or the end user, right? And so that serving station can do multiple cafe tables, AKA jellyfish. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So HTTP2 server push attempted to fix this problem. <laughs> Not with the kitchen, clearly. Uh, we'll talk about more what's really happening here. Uh, and what they did was, you know, we're going to proactively send resources. We're just going to send them because we know you need them. But caching was hard. We made it a little more complicated. There was a push cache and all this other stuff. So it was really hard to realize those positive results. So if we put that into our butter hint scenario, what does that look like? There's no more question. The waitress is just like, here's your butter. And, but I already have butter. I don't need more butter. And then if we extend that further, I already have coffee, I already have silverware, and now you're still giving me, and there's too many stuff on the table, and I can no longer have room for the pancakes. So it's, it's just too much. <laughs> this is where I usually go into a story about my great grandma, who's like, eat, eat, I don't want to eat, I'm not hungry. <laughs> my grandma <laughs> is a uh, <laughs> server push. Um <laughs> Yay, someone laughed. <laughs> if you've never been on stage, it is a little nerve-wracking, so I'm excited y'all laughed at one joke. <laughs> I forgot this is recorded. <laughs> so let's talk about 103 early hits, not just butter hits. I'm here for a reason. We'll talk about more than breakfast. Um, so with 103 early hints, we changed up this area a little. You know, we try to learn. So we're only going to send a hint. And then the browser is going to decide whether to actually action upon that hint or not. We're not going to make caching harder. We're going to use existing caches. And results are still early stage. I mean, that's the whole reason I'm up here, so we can talk about results. I also mentioned a few other ones I know from some other organizations testing out early hints. So <laughs> don't get overwhelmed yet. But um, this is a diagram of early hints. If you have a very creative imagination, you might say, oh, this is familiar. <laughs> so let's take this step by step in non-butter hint language. Um, so we have a client who does a request for example.com. And Cloudflare is our CDN. That's what we're working with. Um, and so they get that request and forward it onto the origin server. But at the same time, they can immediately send a, an early hint to the client. And that client can go ahead and preload those assets while we're doing all that work on the back end to send queries to the database and render the page and send that back finally. Um, and then Cloudflare actually has an early hint cache. And they can send on the request, of course, but also they can update that early hint cache in case those early hints have changed. All right, so what are some of those details? Well, I'm so happy Katie actually started talking about this ahead of time, but what's actually going on here is early hints or 103 early hints, it's an HTTP status code of 103, kind of like your 200 is okay, 103 is an early hint. And the data that's being sent along is in the headers of that response. Um, and they are link headers in the HTTP header. 
Another way of looking at this, another way of looking at this in case the other diagram was a little too much for you, is that we're requesting the page or we're requesting index.html, and then we have this giant gap of server think time and also latency back to the origin server. Uh, finally, that HTML comes in, and then that's when the browser discovers it needs that CSS, and so it can request that CSS. And then finally, the page is going to render after all of that. But with early hints, we send the request for the HTML, Immediately, because Cloudflare is very close, um, we can send back that early hint, and then the browser can go ahead and request that CSS, get it back. We get our HTML, and then the browser can render much faster, theoretically. So in this situation, the CDN is really important. Cloudflare can, this is their quote, they sit within 50 milliseconds of 95% of the internet-connected population globally. So they are, a lot fa they are a lot closer to the end user than we are. Because if you think about it, we are a, we're an e-commerce platform. We have big databases. We're also like a CMS. There's a lot going on. So there's only so many, like, it's prohibitively expensive to put, like, databases and other things that close to every single user. So we make, uh, we make a big use, that's definitely not how you say that, <laughs> of our CDN. <laughs> English is hard. What does that syntax look like? Uh, so it's a 103 early hint response. And then the link headers, it looks a lot like HTML. So if you've never really looked into your HTTP headers, it looks something like this. Um, just the syntax is slightly different. These are examples of pre-connect and preload. So those are the two primary resource hints that we are using for that. And then I realized in here, we probably have a lot of people that are maybe new to performance. So I wanted to give just like a brief introduction to what resource hints are, at least for pre-connect and preload. We do have other early hints, but we're focused, I mean early hints, resource hints, but we're focusing here on pre-connect and preload. So a pre-connect looks like this, and these are just things that are in the HTML. They're not, I mean, you can send headers, um, but not to, confuse, not to confuse things, we're gonna focus on the HTML right now. This is what a pre-connect looks like, and in this situation, it is a pre-connect to our CDN domain, so where our assets are hosted on our CDN. And this says, hey, browser, I know you're going to need to connect to this domain. Uh, you can go ahead and set up that connection early now before you need that resource. So it's warmed up and waiting there when you need it. And you have to use it within a pretty short time period, so you don't want to do it for something further ahead. There's other stuff you can do for that. So that's pre-connect. With preload, is a little different. We are not sending a hint to only do the connection part. We are sending a hint to get the entire resource. This is an example of a preload of a font file. So you have it's an, a link as well. And um, of course, you're going to do the URL to the actual font file. And the relationship is preload. And then we have all these extra attributes that we need for fonts. We, I mean, we have to tell the browser what type of file it is, what the file format is, and for fonts, you need cross-origin true. But um, preloads can be tricky. So I always want to do this caveat. They can be a foot gun. So uh, <laughs> what that means is you can accidentally shoot yourself in the foot with them. You can, like, they seem really cool, but you can cause your load to be slower or, you know, the impression of it being slower. Things might render slower because you are over-prioritizing things that are maybe less important. So we're going to talk more about that later, too. But that is pre-connect and preload. Let's take a step back and talk about, like, when should we even consider early hints? And I'm glad Katie started talking about this as well. What's really important for Shopify is that first page experience. For when we have a first page experience that is 10% faster, on average, there's a 7% increase in conversion. So that's really important, right? That's e-commerce. When our merchants make money, we make money too. That's the whole point of Shopify to be in business. But um, yeah, so it's that first page experience. It's less so on later pages. So we want to optimize those landing pages. So when should I consider those early hints? First impressions, when first impressions are important for conversions, whatever that might be on your website. And also, you maybe don't need to optimize all your pages. You could focus on those landing pages that are crucial. Also, it's only really relevant when your server has to do work before sending back that HTML. So 
we kind of had the example of how Shopify works or how butter gets work, pancakes work. But for example, on my blog, uh, C.Codes, I build that using Eleventy. Every time I make a commit, the site is rebuilt and those pages are just sitting there waiting to be served on the Netlify CDN. So there's no like server work or um, there's no backend work that has to occur. It can just immediately be served. Early hints would do nothing for my website because HTML is just, it's gonna be the thing that's immediately arriving. So if that can happen, then you don't even need to consider early hints. Also, if your server or your origin server is further than your Edge or CDN server, uh, that can be a good um, opportunity as well. Because like I said, that latency can be a big hit on your performance. And also, this was one I kind of actually discovered more during testing or really absorbed, was that your traffic has to be high enough that that edge location will likely have that early hint cached. Because um, you, you, you don't want those early hints sitting around for a long time, because like, what if it changes? You don't want to download the wrong file, and then which file they should have downloaded was different, and now you're doing double files again, which is not great. And related to that, we only want to use it on resources that don't change too often. I see, I see cameras up, so I'm like, should I pause for the picture? <laughs> I, will, I will share the slides afterwards, too. Uh, let's talk about teamwork. Because I actually, I really like the story that happened behind this. It was a partnership between Shopify, Cloudflare, and Chrome. So like normally, for example, when Chrome has to deliver a new feature, they have to go all the way to origin trial before they can start getting feedback or like seeing how much interest there is in something. But this was like a purposeful partnership between the three of us. And that's because <laughs> Some more great art is going on. <laughs> we have Shopify, where we have more than 2 million websites. So we have all these different websites. And we also have this situation where early hints would probably help. And we have Cloudflare, which is a CDN who can actually send and the early hints to the browser. And the browser, of course, can just listen. They can't actually like <laughs> do the reverse. They can't tell someone to send an early hint to them. And uh, I also wanted to recognize all the people that went into work on this. So at Shopify, it was Colin Bindle. At Cloudflare, it was Alex Krivet. At Chrome, it was Kenji Bau and um, Kenichi Ishibashi as the engineer. And all of those people are really excited to like hear feedback and stuff. I know Kenichi, uh, Kenichi, um, Kenji wanted to know if you had more ideas or feedback or other things that they should try out for, you know, ideas for experiments. At least all of the product slash product project managers were are on Twitter. Uh, I can also just tell you, like, if you find me later, later I will be at the performance help desk, or at least tomorrow at lunchtime. But I'll also be around. Oh, this is also when I tell you, especially if you're newer to performance and you have no idea what I'm saying, there are no dumb questions. Like, you might be embarrassed to ask later on, but feel free to come find me, and I do not mind answering those. All right, so let's talk about results. This is probably what you're here for. This is the important part. So our first experiment was with pre-connect. This is what it looked like for us. We have a separate CDN for our assets, cdn.shopify.com. So we are sending early hints for all of our web pages um, for pre-connect. And we did an experiment on Black Friday, Cyber Monday in 2021. And if you don't know, that is a very huge shopping time um, in the West. And I know um, at Cloudflare, Alex was talking about how he was very nervous of like doing an experiment or like our biggest sales days of the year. <laughs> but it worked out fine. Um, so for largest contentful paint, the gist of this slide is those teal or bluish bars are lower, AKA faster, and those were the ones with early hints. So across the regions and across the different operating systems, our largest contentful paint was faster by about 400, 400 500 milliseconds, that's the median. Um, and yeah, it was great. Of course, this is just first experiences. And if you're not familiar with box plots, what this is generally saying is that dark line in the middle is the median. The boxes themselves are the 25% to 75, I actually have a picture, some more art. <laughs> the 25% to 75% range of users. So, um, and then the lines are the whiskers, but uh, I'm not gonna explain those too much because I had to cut off the top ones, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see <laughs> the lovely boxes. 
but yeah. And Nick is going to talk more about what all these different metrics mean coming up. So if that's new to you, um, you'll learn about that in a little bit. In terms of what does that actually look like, this is an example film strip on the top line. I know you can't probably read that in the back. But the top line is a baseline without early hints, and the bottom is our pre-connect early hint showing that the page renders faster. All right, well, let's, let's stop for a second and think about what's happening here, right? This is a test for pre-connect to a separate domain, cdn.shopify.com. But what would have been the ideal solution in this scenario? Same domain, exactly. Yay, someone actually answered. Yeah, <laughs> I like that, actually. <laughs> but um, it would be to be, put it on the same domain. But why was it even on a separate domain? Because before we had HTTP2, where we could start doing multiplexing, we had a limited number of files we could do on each um, domain. So what we did was domain sharding so that we could actually download more files at once and get the page rendered faster. But now we have new technology, but companies can't change instantly, right? We have infrastructure, um, a lot of things we have to set up. We have contracts. A lot of stuff is going on there. So we, maybe we can't do the optimal solution right away. But now we have this, like, you could call it a Band-Aid, but I think it's, like, a very um, practical one. Or it's a, it's a valid situation, right? Like, you're, unless you're starting out with your infrastructure today, you're not, I mean, like, you're always going to be legacy after that, right? All right. Let's talk about preload. So this is, again, what um, your early hints might look like for preload. We have, I have examples of font files, scripts, and CSS here. You can also do images. Although, before I forget, source set is not quite working. There's like some implementation details there that still need to be worked out. Source does an image source, but not source set. But before we dive too deep in there, I want to talk to you about how Shopify works, because you might not have actually used it, so you don't necessarily have the context to understand like, what's unique about our results, for example, versus Etsy, which is like one website. Um, we use HTML Liquid as our HTML templating language. We do have this new uh, platform called Hydrogen that is a React app, but that's very few of our merchants, so I'm going to just focus on Liquid here. Liquid is similar to Nunjux, Handlebars, um, Pug, there's a lot of different things. I, <laughs> I love using Nunjucks on my personal website in Eleventy. Sorry, <laughs> I'm going to start plugging a totally different product. <laughs> it's open source. Anyways, um, and we can access directly, data directly in Liquid for server-side rendering. And I'm going to show you, just so you understand the context, this is our, we just launched a, like, a performance-based blog for um, Shopify so that we can cover topics. But anyways, we actually built it on Shopify so that we could <laughs> eat your own dog food or drink your own champagne, as my boss likes to say. <laughs> but um, you can see it's mostly HTML. And then we have these little you know, curly brackets and other stuff going on where we can either, for example, this is we're dumping a data um, object called canonical URL there. And if I scroll down, we can actually see an example of a preload here. That's that I want to download that Shopify sans regular font. Um, these are filters. So in Liquid, a filter is just a function. And it, they kind of pipe to each other. So first create that asset URL, then create a link rel preload, and then add these different HTML attributes after that. So that's how it kind of works, and now you can understand a little bit more of the context of the rest of this. Because we only provide early hints if a merchant or a theme developer does it through Liquid. If someone just has a pre-connect or preload in their HTML, it does not automatically go to early hints. It will just be a regular pre-connect or preload. These are examples of fonts, and then I also just dropped in script and style. Style's a little bit different because it's just a, it's a different tag. It's called a style sheet tag instead of a preload tag. And we can also do images, and images also look different. Um, here, I this image tag, what it does, if we don't have that preload true, the only thing it does is it will create that markup for an image. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. 
Once you add that preload true, it's going to add your HTML image tag, but it will also create a preload tag and put that in the head of your HTML, and then also create the early hint for the link header. I have opinions on this. <laughs> I think maybe try using that fetch priority instead first. But also, if you think about the way Shopify works, um, we also have sections, because it's like a CMS too, right? So we have sections, and people can put those sections on any, they're reusable. Um, they can put them on multiple pages and different parts of the page. So like, are you even going to know if that's the LCP image or like, you know, above the fold or not? But there's also another problem here, regardless of whether you think it would be good to preload or not. <laughs> Does anyone see a potential problem here? So this widths property, it's an array of widths to create your source set, right? So it's a lot, right? I mean, this looks like we've seen even more. This is just an example. So this would create a giant source set, which there's some issues before we even get to <laughs> Preload. There can be a few issues there because you'll you probably won't hit your image cache as much if you have this many source sets. And also, I mean, is there really a difference between 80 pixels wide and 90 pixels wide? Probably not. But that markup, <laughs> you know, it's this like giant screen of URLs in your source set, and it's really big. So what could go wrong? <laughs> Preloading could cause your store not to load at all. So what happened was, <laughs> because we're programmatically creating these, like no one's hard coding like a link. We're like, oh, you put it in your liquid, so we'll just like, you know, our um, storefront renderer will create that all that by yourself. So you can easily dump in like, you know, 20 different source sets candidates and it will create a link for that. So those link headers got so large that the browser borked and it just couldn't load the page. <laughs> Sorry, go hide behind here. <laughs> but, um, so beware of making your headers too large. This is when we went back and we start putting a limit on that. Like if, if a theme or a, a merchant accidentally goes over that limit, we just don't do the rest of them. But yeah, that's, that was a thing you can accidentally do. Where were we? We were talking about results. So let's, let's continue with those preload results. Well, <laughs> rum is hard. <laughs> this is my shorthand. It's not really like rum itself is hard. I mean, that kind of rum is hard. But um, <laughs> the less fun run that I call <laughs> real user monitoring is hard. This is my shorthand for saying, Scientific experimentation and statistical validation of a change is hard. <laughs> so when we did, when we tested pre-connect, we did like the right thing. We did a true A-B test and we measured the difference between, you know, who got it and who didn't get it. With preload, we got a little lazy and we're like, oh, we'll just measure before and after the change. But of course, Shopify is a big company and we have a lot of stuff going on on our back end, right? We have a lot of different teams working on different aspects of like hitting the database, you know, optimizing queries, stuff like that, and analytics. And um, what we ended up measuring was just like the change in our TTFB, <laughs> which is not, I mean, actually, this is actually a good point to say that. Um, Early hints impacts your TTFB. It, if you implement early hits, you're probably measuring something different than what you think you're measuring because that response start can now be triggered by the early hint itself when normally we think of TTFB as being the start of the document. So it, it is like an FYI. So don't focus too much on that. Focus on some of your other metrics. But anyways, we were measuring this. And then also if you think about it, um, we only want to measure first impressions, so now we got to figure out how to only measure those first impressions to like really look at it before and after. But then also some, only some merchants are using the liquid version of preload and preconnect, uh, or actually the preconnect is automatic, but the preloads, you can only get them via liquid, so now we have to further subset that. And then remember, like only if you have high traffic are you really going to start seeing that benefit. So we've now <laughs> gone down to a really small sample of comparison. And <laughs> we couldn't do the rum right. I do want to do a true A-B test so that we can start doing a little bit more macro analysis on it. But what I like to call this next part of my presentation <laughs> is <laughs> I put through my web page as pro budget in two days, attempting to get some lab data at least to share with you that was a little bit more reasonable.
And don't quote this next statistic because it's not like a scientific, like a true scientific experiment. But the rest of this, I think, will get some of my point across is that, well, I did, I tested 16 different merchant websites and I looked at their home pages, um, a collection page, so like a list of products and a product page. Now, if you think about that, that product page might be less valid because remember, early hints is going to impact more that first initial page experience in a session. Um, but there was a high variation between each of those nine runs in a lot of cases. And then between those merchants and pages, that range of improvement or degradation was quite high. It was like minus 15%, um, as in 15% worse on LCP to 21% better. Um, I gave you a median of 1.2% improvement, but like I said, that's only 16 merchants. It's not really like, we'll wait till we get some actual ROM data on there. But I do think, I, I took a few samples out and looked at some of these pages, and I think the, the answer here is that preload is still a foot gun. I mean, I don't see any reason why that wouldn't change with early hints. Um, it's still a foot gun. It can be great. It can also be terrible. So you need to test it either way. So let's look at a few examples. Um, this is a waterfall. And on the top line, if you're not used to waterfalls, the top line is that HTML document with web page tests, which is amazing. You can, it might be kind of hard to see, but that top line, it's like a light blue color and then it's dark blue. That dark blue is when bytes are actually downloading and we can see that um, that connection and those files started downloading uh, after that dark blue started. So this is without early hints. Nothing happened until the document arrived. And it's, this is the performance. And then, but with early hints, <laughs> foot gun, <laughs> we have, they, I can tell here, I mean, I can also look, what's cool in WebHTS, if you actually click the top line, the HTML, it will tell you what was early hinted. Um, but I can also tell here because their lines start before that dark blue of the document itself downloading. And we can see that they are early hinting six font files. So that, that is probably the foot gun because, I mean, like, I don't, I don't know if I've ever been in a situation where six font files was a good use of preload. Um, because you think about, like, the render blocking resources and stuff like that. So, eh. oh, and this was an example where they were worse using early hints. And, like, the standard deviation or, the, like, the percent worse was over 100% of the standard deviation. So it's like, oh, how do we not, like, what's a significant difference, but there's only nine months. I don't want to go too much into statistics at the moment. But on the opposite side, we have this case where um, oh, the top line, again, is baseline. The bottom line is early hints. And so we actually start that user perception of rendering happening faster. But also, how much of this was, like, I still have questions. How much of this was because of the pre-connect? This one, I think, was preloading, like, 10 CSS files, which CSS is render blocking. Um, but then they were doing it in a funny way because they were doing the, that lazy load trick, you know, where you do, like, on load, change the um, media to all rather than print. So how much of this was just the pre-connect moving it ahead so that all those files could initiate sooner versus just versus the actual preloads? So I have questions. I think there's both good and bad here, um, or the opportunity for both good and bad. So in conclusion, early hints, I think, is more promising than HTTP2 server push. It's a little bit more delicate. <laughs> it's not my great grandma. <laughs> you must eat. No, I'm not okay. <laughs> It's um, pre-connect definitely showed promising results for us. Oh, I should say here, um, I know Wix, I don't know if someone from Wix is here, but um, I think they, it was inconclusive for them. Etsy, on the other hand, I know Paul Calvano and the Etsy performance team has been working on this, and they tested pre-connect and some font preloads, not six of them, and they saw... 2% improvement? Don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. But they are seeing some improvement, and they are experimenting more. Um, preload is trickier. Uh, so I'm, I think it's still the case that you need case-by-case -case testing. <laughs> T-work makes the dream work. <laughs> that partnership between Shopify, Google, Cloudflare. Um, definitely be involved. If you have feedback on these things, too, um, 
give it to, I know Chrome is always looking for feedback. And butter hints are always better than no butter hints. <laughs> So thank you very much. Uh, the slides are at butterhints.netlify.com. Uh, I feel like we're all going to be really disappointed if lunch doesn't have just like thick pads of butter just melted all over <laughs> right? everything now. I know. I'm, like, I'm, I'm a Wisconsinite, so we do, we do butter and cheese pretty hard there. So, yeah. <laughs> you um, go hard on the butter. We go, we go hard on the butter. <laughs> Not, yeah, melted. I mean, Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, we need to stop there. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, so, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, so when you were showing the, uh, the pre-connect uh, early hints that you mm -hmm. were using in Shopify, there were two of them. Uh, there was, they were both to cdn.shopify.com. One of them had something with cores and one did not. Yeah. Uh, what was the need for the second one? Do you remember? Well, I mean, I guess because, you know, you have... Some, some assets need cores to download, so like, why not actually pre-connect both? No. I don't actually... So you just need to have yeah, both yeah. network connections made kind of early up front. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. I'm um, trying to gracefully sit here. It's really awkward. Is like, it? No, how am I supposed to do this? No, I, I think you're <laughs> nailing it for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, I can be extra awkward if that helps. I can, I, can, I can double down on the awkward pretty easily. I'm good at it. Um, <laughs> All right, so I feel like you went over some of the trade-offs and stuff for the early hint stuff kind of at the end there. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, like, is, is, were most of the trade-offs, maybe all the trade-offs seemed like they were preloaded with what you'd done for testing, or were there anything with pre-connect specifically that seemed problematic? Well, you know, well, also pre that pre-connect test was before my time at Shopify. Okay. Um, no, I don't think the trade-off so much. There were other issues that came up too. Um, so if you're trying to roll your own, for example, um, or actually even set it up, there are there is documentation. So definitely just check the documentation. That's going to be better than listening to me tell you the documentation. But um, there are weird things that happen, like uh, a lot of the internet and like legacy server architecture just assumes like a like an HTTP status is going to that's one is 100, and so like it got really complicated. I guess that wasn't really what you were asking though, huh? No, but that's, I mean, that, yeah. that, that's, but a gotcha is, yeah, those are the interesting gotchas. things. Because mm -hmm. there was like, somebody asked the question, like, could you use, does this work safely as a form of like progressive enhancement on top of resource hint in the HTML itself? Like, does that make sense pairing oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, you, so I think we actually still have pre-connect too, because not, well, A, not all browsers do early hints. So the pre-connects, if they're going to help you without early hints. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, there was one more thing I was going to say, and I forgot. It's okay if it comes back. I know. <laughs> um, but the first one, the, the pre-connecting to that third-party domain. I mean, I remember when I oh, saw that, that was... Oh, that's the oh, thing I've... It. Yeah, ahead, yeah, because you said third-party. So uh -huh. we're only doing it to our own domain. So I'm actually kind of curious is like how... This is a question I have no idea what's possible and what's a security issue. But um, I'm really curious is like if we can expand this to third parties because... <laughs> Like a lot of websites, if we have 2 million plus websites on Shopify, sure. we have a lot of websites with too many third-party apps and, you know, uh, whatnot. And so there's a lot going on there. Some of them are render blocking in a different way. Like they're doing client-side rendering because they're reaching out to personalization or they're doing A-B testing. So I'm like, if I could get some of that faster, can I make the whole page faster? But currently we're only doing it on the Shopify um, hosted. Yeah, the A-B testing one is actually kind of an interesting one because mm -hmm. client-side A-B testing has been for the perf vets out there, that is like the bane of your existence yeah, for exactly. decades. Mm -hmm. So uh, anything that we can do to offset some of that overhead that comes across on the browser side of things mm -hmm. is helpful there. Um, but yeah, it feels like that's a good place. Like if you were looking to potentially start playing with us on your own site, is mm -hmm. that where you would start is maybe pre-connecting to, yes, yeah, so if you have like your assets like on a cdn.shopify yeah, yeah. or like a cloudinary, is that like mm -hmm. the right way to kind of play with it at first? I feel like it is. I yeah. don't know. Am I an expert? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you are. I, uh, yeah. No, I, yes. I, yeah, I I'm think. Like killing my credibility. No, you're nailing. No, it's great. Um, it's good. I'm like, I think this is that. a trick question. <laughs> no, no, no I'm kidding. I'm messing with you. <laughs> oh, I'm not that good of an interviewer to trick people. Uh, okay. So, um, for, uh, oh, there was a question around. You mentioned that the. Um, you know, this is really only or more applicable in situations where there's some server-side processing time yeah, that yeah. has to kick in. Mm -hmm. So the question for was... For preload, not pre-connect, yeah. For preload, yeah. not pre-connect, because, okay. All oh, right. no, actually both, sorry. Okay, okay, 
That's okay. Um, so uh, with that, like, is the, the delay on Shopify side of thing for the backend response? Like, the, mm -hmm. the question was around, like, could you just speed that up? Oh, definitely. And we do work a lot on that. Um, actually, there's a lot of activity right now um, looking into some of that stuff. Because as we ramp up to Black Friday, Cyber Monday, we want to start provisioning more things and making that back and faster because we're going to have sure. to handle a lot more traffic. But also... Um, <laughs> Where I was going. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, what I, um, was kudos to you, by the way, the Black Friday thing. Kudos to you on like having the guts to run an experiment oh, on yeah. Black Friday because that that's was, like that when every e com I, I can just <laughs> right? picture I can picture everybody who's working on an e com shop as soon as you say right. that in the audience being like, oh, what? Like, I know. That would be I'm terrifying. pretty sure like my eyes got wide when I realized that's what. Yeah, happened. no, that's that's a bold move. <laughs> it's a bold move. I'm glad it paid off pretty well though in the end. No, no, but what was my no? This was an important point. It was the um. Oh, the server. So yeah, there's a lot going on there, and but there are like conditions, especially for example, where I, I have to look more into this. Like, but like on a collection page, for example, mm -hmm. it's a it's a list of products. So you have all those lists of products. But now, when you think about like more modern um, UX experience on these list pages, like they might have all variations of the product too. And so now you've had you've accidentally introduced like an M plus one query sure. into your thing. So now the back end is doing a lot more work. And so, actually, that's one of the things I kind of want to look at next. They actually have a few theme devs that are supposed to be here. Um, but they mentioned this issue of, like, how sure. we can accommodate for it. So there's also certain situations where that backend's going to get longer, regardless of what we do to try to optimize it yeah, and make it faster. That makes sense. Yeah. Do you have any idea, um, have you heard anything about, like, where the early hints uh, in terms of adoption from other browsers is looking like? <laughs> no idea. No idea. Is it okay. anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That can be a good question for maybe like a performance help desk know, or something. Because right? <laughs> that'll be interesting to see. I think the good news is like you kind of already pointed out, like yeah. that can be the progressive enhancement thing. Yeah. And we've got the resource since to mm -hmm. fall back on. But Oh, you know, another weird thing I was thinking of is that um, I forgot to mention this. At least Katie mentioned it in her um, presentation. But normally when we think of preload, we use it for situations where it would be like a late discovered asset. Like for example, that's why you see fonts a lot of times. Because right, you're probably declaring your font in your CSS file. So the browser doesn't know you need it until it also downloads that CSS font file um, creates a CSS SOM and you know does all the things and realize it needs the font. So sometimes we preload because it's going to be discovered late. Or the same with like an LCP image if you're doing like client side rendering. So that's when we normally use preload. But this is now introducing this case where it might be discoverable like by the preload scanner immediately when the document arrives, but maybe you want it to arrive faster, so you're going to put it in early hints. So like that's a like another weird thing I'm trying to wrap my head around. Like, oh, are we like breaking that decision or should we separate it you know like yeah I don't that's know. that is an interesting one because you're right like I think like um for preload mm -hmm. uh, it was one of those slow lessons I think that we learned I think yeah, it was first yeah, yeah. like preload everything regardless yeah. and then it was like no no you're not going to see the impact if it's like already in the html yeah but with early hints yeah you're right maybe maybe you will see a little bit of an impact because you're going to yeah. shift it just that little bit mm -hmm. I could see that being a nice boost for like the lcp images or something like mm -hmm. that potentially there's also a race condition too because like like our server's not super far all the time. And so sometimes the document kind of arrives at the same time of the early hint and then like, <laughs> but then like, oh, the re another way you can find out if something was theoretically triggered by the early hint is the resource timings. Like um, it will tell you what, that it was queued off of the early hint, but then okay. it might say that if it was already in the cache also, it's just that timing would be really short. Okay, cool. All right, but that's good to know for anybody who's looking to try yeah. and measure this from a run perspective for mm -hmm. sure. Um, okay, awesome. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. This was fantastic. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>